Independent small businesses thrive on quality, whether it be regarding the product, the reviews, or the customer support. If any of those have an issue, your perspective on the business is going to be painted in a particular way, most of the time negatively. If all of them are impacted, it won't be long until you have to close up shop. With that said, this, and many other subtle lessons, is established in this heartfelt coffee shop simulator, where many fictional races on Earth in Seattle in the year 2020 visit your local establishment with their own stories that they bring to the table. Or coffee bar, to be technical. Every character explodes with life by the use of movement, facial expressions, body language, word choice, and backstories that are slowly revealed over the days of running this quaint little Java hut. These interactions are surrounded by specific aesthetics, lo-fi, modes of service, user interface experience, plot direction, a phone, a barista, and quotes of all varieties that blend together for a lot tay of fun. If you ever had the experience of playing the demo or watched any of the trailers, you would have noticed the immediate art direction of Coffee Talk. Simplistic yet detailed. Simplistic in clothing, but detailed regarding the head area. While being labeled under pixel graphics, it actually doesn't feel like it at all. Due to not only the sheer amount of art quality, but the interactions with the characters, which draws you closer to them and makes them feel like real people. This is prone to happen if you are relaxed, which works in the developer's favor to help you get attached to all the characters using the power of atmosphere. While at this coffee shop, the place is vibrant enough to keep your attention, yet very chill in presentation and makes relaxation the easiest mindset to be in. It's a similarity that can also be drawn by hanging out at a friend's house, except instead of real people in a private place, it's fictional people in a public place. In this public place, there is one specific genre of music that fits perfectly with the atmosphere and art direction of Coffee Talk, and that is lo-fi chill hop. Thanks to Andrew Jeremy, the composer of all 27 songs in this original soundtrack, these chill beats are a necessary addition for the overall vibe of this establishment. Even as a standalone project, the soundtrack is great music to write to, and would fit beautifully on lo-fi hip-hop music beats to relax slash study to. Opposing the sense of hearing, the sense of sight, leads to the great user interface experience of Coffee Talk. Generally, the overlays match the tone and style of the shop. Every specific part of the UI has a purpose and doesn't clutter the game. The box with the three bars is the pause menu, which leads you to the menu of game options. Pretty self-explanatory, whoa, big boy moment. <laughs> Clicking the dialog box lets you access your current conversation. So in case if you accidentally clicked and missed it, you can click that and you can see the previous conversations. It's a really handy tool, I'm not gonna lie. On the other side is a phone with a Wi-Fi bar, data bar, battery bar, y you know, phone stuff. It also shows the date of the day, so which day you're playing in a subtle enough way where it's not just like day one on the phone you know it's actually like a natural thing that would be on a phone now if you exit out of the phone go to the pause menu quit the game and go to the main menu this is where modes become accessible the three modes would be the story mode endless mode and challenge mode oh also i was wrong it isn't story mode endless mode and challenge mode it's story mode free brew mode and challenge mode I don't know why I got it confused, but I did. So, I'm an idiot. Story mode paints a visual story in front of your eyes as you serve the finest of drinks that this little Java shack in Seattle 2020 can afford. Free brew mode is a playground of drink mixtures where no matter what you make, Freya will like it because that's what friends do, I guess, and gives you a chance of more drink discovery for your portfolio of culinary creations. Challenge mode is a race against time. That's a mood where you will be judged if you get the drink incorrect, and is increasingly more difficult the longer you survive. While Reaper. challenge mode don't offer a lot regarding gameplay, it gives the game more content once you finish the main story. With a game like Coffee Talk, I believe that the main point of the game is spectating everyone's opinion on basically everything. It shows another perspective of storytelling where you're not the main character. In fact, you are the least important character of the story. The humor is meaningful yet doesn't feel forced, making light of how awkwardness is hilarious. Could go on forever complaining about her. That won't help.
should make a meme about her. I lose my current project for a minute of laughter. That might be worth that. <laughs> well, the game mostly focuses on how the customer's interactions are, both with the other customers and with said barista, rather than beverage brewing. The dialogue is a situation where you can actually take something from it and actually apply it to your life, especially regarding relationships and careers. Those two are like the big topics in this game, which is interesting because I feel like a lot of people can resonate with that, which is really cool. While for the most part, the characters have pretty tame dialogue, they aren't shy from the occasional yet natural drama, and in the process makes you feel emotions. Although most of your interactions are done face to face, the other form of communication you have at your disposal is your mobile device. At first glance, you would think that these panels are just there for symmetry's sake, but actually each panel plays an important role to the game as a whole. So for example, once you initially learn some info about a character, it's set in concrete so that way you can go back to day one with new knowledge. Now in order to access said data, you need to open up Facebook, I mean uh, Toto to Chill, Tomo to Chill, I, phew, what is that name? And notice that each character that you meet has a page of their own. It's probably the least important out of the four since you basically learn all of this info in-game anyways. First up is Freya, your wacky writer friend who's writing her own stories at her own job. But don't tell her boss, cause, oh shoot. Next is Joji. Georgie, not Joji. I wish it was Joji, that'd be cool, but no. Georgie, the police officer who likes to take a lot of breaks at this coffee shop. Gala, who... Fair enough. Lua, the business developer who loves her family. Bailey's, a freelance designer who hates his family and is the character that I actually relate the most to. Not because I hate my family, but because I also do freelance. Work. Oh my gosh, it sounded so bad. Hyde, the ancient vampire supermodel. Myrtle, a programmer who- Oh. Apparently, her favorite things list is set to close friends only. Which is fair, because uh, she doesn't have a lot of those. Rachel, the young band member turned pop star who has an email- Wait, hold on! So I emailed it, and uh... Yeah, not a real email, which is a little bit of a shame because that would have been a cool easter egg, so. Neil. We're just gonna leave it at that. Aqua, resource and development in a company as well as making her own indie game. And Henry, the young band member turned pop star's father. Come to think about it, I think the amount of drinks that you get right actually influences how much information shows up on Tomo to Chill. Because I never got Gala's drinks right, but I always got Freya's drinks correct. So using Freya as my control group, basically, if you don't get all the drinks right, you just can't be friends. That's true to real life. So in order to get friends, you'll need a brew pad. And it's literally the most important panel on your phone. It contains all of the recipes that you have discovered, and the more combinations you make, the more gets added to your list. It's also sectioned off by type of drink. So in case a certain person named Freya busts through the door demanding cappuccino and running off a no sleep, while I am extremely hesitant to not be a pawn in her game, I had to cave for only story progression. I didn't want to, but I had to, which is stupid, but it's fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. Speaking of her, she works at the Evening Whispers, and Freya's public writings from her job are located there. There's one page per day, so it updates depending on the day, and gives you a slice of her skills. On a scale of importance in the storyline, it's in the middle because it's not like super important, but if you want to know how good her skills are, then I would highly recommend reading it. Her stories are honestly pretty funny, mostly due to the general banter she creates with her characters. These general stories hide some life observations the more you read, and the genuinely good writing hooks you, making you want more once you read all of the short stories. Out of all the stories, my personal favorite is The Anxious Boy. And this anxious boy loves to listen to his Spotify- I mean, Shuffled. Shuffled is the Spotify of chill hop lo-fi in the Coffee Talk universe. Aramie Jandrew did a fantastic job on the very chill, the most chill soundtrack I've ever heard. So props to him for not just making an amazing soundtrack to an amazing game, but great music to relax to. However, while being a barista, you can never be too relaxed as the demand for delicacies rises 
the longer you play. Due to this daily demand, there are times where you get an order right, but in the wrong order. Because I guess that matters. Or just straight up get an order completely wrong. Kind of like how a certain someone never got the werewolf's order right, even though he said he wanted something, so I tried his best, you know, to follow what he said, but he didn't give me specific instructions, so I had to do guesswork, and he's like, that's not what I want. I'm like, bruh, I literally tried my best to get you the thing you wanted, and you didn't want it, apparently, even though I tried to, I, yeah, being a barista is hard, man. Then there are situations where customers ask for the usual, as usual customers do, right? But either you go into red alert mode because you're like, oh shoot, do I remember? Do I remember? Do I remember the usual? Uh, no, Freya, Freya's a, a triple, triple shot espresso. You know, oh, him, her, oh no, I can't remember. Uh. One very specific thing about being the barista is that your character is very blunt. This one of your impulsive temporary idea. Stop being so blunt, me. Stop. Stop it. Stop being... <laughs> Uh, what is up with my character? Why do you have to be so honestly blunt all the time? I, uh, wow. Um, this is a very integral tone of dialogue because it makes it obvious that that's not how you should talk to people. <laughs> like, it's very clear. Even the other characters confirm that, mostly Freya. While forcing your character down a very direct tone of speech, there are times where all of a sudden you see that in another character and realize, oh wait, Maybe I shouldn't talk like that. Maybe I should, you know, be careful about my tone because feelings are a thing. Oh wow, that's crazy. Out of the entire story mode, I literally only have two negative things to say. If one grasps at straws, just so that way it legitimizes the honesty. One thing that was noticeable was the fact that when the characters order anything, it all just shows up as a cup of coffee. For example, when Rachel orders a cup of milk, and we can see obviously here that it's a cup of milk when it goes on the bar. It's a cup of coffee. It's not a cup of milk. Like, what is this? It's not a big deal. It, it really is. It's just, it, it takes you out of the moment for like two seconds. And that's that. The other thing was that the ending felt abrupt. But why is that? Oh, because the timeline just two weeks for kind of no reason. It's a little bit weird, a little bit wonky. There's obviously a weird gap here. And that could be one of two reasons. A, they just didn't know how else to progress the story, or B, they're going to make a sequel and or DLC, which if they do make a DLC, I'm going to jump out of this window right here because like, if you buy a game, you want the full story, but if you pay for more, you get more of the story. That's just dumb, and I wish Togi Productions wouldn't fall into that trap. That's all I'm asking. I don't care if you do DLC, just like, if you pay for a game, like, you should get the entire game, right? Basically, I don't know why it jumped two weeks in the future. It it, it kind of doesn't make sense. Content of the game that is playable hosts two very key moments of the storyline, and that shift your perspective on the game as a whole. First is the wolf that's in a fury, where he busts through the shop, fierce as ever, and it legit shocked me. Which makes one realize that 99% of this game is extremely chill. So when something like this happens, it vastly contrasts to everything that's happening and really makes it stand out and really makes you feel terrified. It's crazy. Second was the after credit scene, which was literally the biggest shock to me. A doctor walk in, some chit chat happens. Not only is he an alien, but apparently you are also an alien. Wow. Just wow. Like, honestly, I was n What? It's- What? After that realization, you may be inclined to go for a second playthrough. If you do so, it gives you a chance to get all of the drinks correct. It also lets the ending provide a different perspective on every character as a whole, since now you realize that this coffee shop is literally a societal investigation on humanity. With a game like Coffee Talk, it's important to realize many things. Atmosphere plays a large role in moods and feelings, which includes amazing soundtrack and visual artistry. Replayability can keep people invested even after completing the main storyline by means of hinting at something more and different game modes. How UI can be done in a way that's not clunky where each factor has a set purpose that feels necessary. Stories being told in more diverse ways, 
where you go for the coffee and stay for the talk. Special thanks to my five patrons who support me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash or click the link in the description.